The tundra in the Northwest Territories is a vast area, breathtaking as well as barren. But deep beneath the snow and ice lies a massive source of untapped energy. And if it can be harnessed, the implications are enormous. The source of energy is essentially a form of natural gas. Yet so much of it remains a mystery. Here now is Land of Fire, a feature report from our colleagues at the Radio Canada program, Découverte. It's here, above the Arctic Circle, in the land of the Inuit, that the secret lies. At the edge of the Beaufort Sea, an arm of the Arctic Ocean, a place where the land seems larger than nature itself, a great dominion of ice and snow. It appears to be an icy realm, but it is perhaps also a land of fire. It looks incredible. This ice really is burning. It's been created in a laboratory, but what might surprise you is that ice that can burn like this can be found in the Canadian North. This isn't ice to be found on the surface. It lies deep under the permafrost, and this very special ice is actually gas hydrate. You need two factors to form natural gas hydrates. You need a source of natural gas, and you need cold temperatures and relatively high pressures. Gas hydrates are natural gas compressed under intense pressure into solid form. Natural gas is 90% methane, or CH4, and so the gas hydrate is actually methane trapped within a cage of ice. Uh, they're arranged in such a fashion that they have an ice-like texture to them and basically they look like ice and when you warm them up they release natural gas. Temperature. Today's temperature minus 45 degrees. We have to be very careful, safe operations. That's cool. <laughs> Last winter, a team of scientists met in Inuvik in the Northwest Territories. Canadian geologist Scott Dallimore and his American counterpart Tim Collett led a team bringing together researchers from Japan, Germany, India, the United States and Canada. Their mission, to collect as much data as possible about gas hydrates so they might someday be harnessed as an energy source. And what we know about gas hydrates today is that there's a very large volume of gas trapped in gas hydrates. But as an energy resource issue, we know very little about its producibility. Can you actually get it out of the ground in an economic way or in a technically feasible way where you can make use of it? The amount of energy we'd have to put into the ground to get them out as gas is unknown. And that's what we're setting about to understand here. We're trying to unravel the science behind these natural gas hydrates. Let's go. Let's go. These scientists from around the world haven't come to the Canadian Arctic because they love the cold. Let's go. They are here because this region is an excellent natural laboratory to study gas hydrates and a region where this magical ice is most readily found. But readily found does not mean easy and the frozen north poses tremendous obstacles for scientists. Here, the permafrost is 600 meters thick. The scientists have to drill through another 200 meters to reach the first layer of gas hydrates. There are about 10 layers to be found between the depths of 800 and 1100 meters. Drilling is a delicate operation. Not just because of the difficult meteorological and environmental conditions. Retrieving valuable samples calls for precise work so as not to compromise the stability of the deposits. The drilling takes place 150 kilometers from Inuvik near the Beaufort Sea. Scientists reach the site after a three hour drive across the frozen surface of the Mackenzie River. These materials exist there in very large quantities and, and in this case there's an excess of two and a half football fields in depth of these materials right below our feet. Uh, it's really quite an incredible storehouse of energy down there. 
The growing interest in harnessing natural gas hydrates is because reserves, not only here but around the world, are enormous. There is a lot of hydrates in the world. Um, if you took the energy that you could derive from gas hydrates, it yields almost twice as much energy as you could get from all other sources of hydrocarbons, for instance. If you were to add up conventional natural gas, oil, tar sands, coal, add them all up together, you'd have still twice as much energy in the form of hydrates. That's a tremendous amount of resource potential. And if you can produce even a very small percentage of that resource, it makes a very significant difference of, of the energy balance of what we use for the economy today of many countries in the world. There's a tremendous amount of energy squeezed into these little specks. The gas hydrates are the white spots. They can be as small as grains of sand mixed in the layers of sediment. For the most part, this reservoir looks much like this. Sands and pebbly sands filled with grains of hydrate. The larger the sediment, like this gravel, the greater the volume of trapped gas hydrates. But samples this size are rare. There's a massive hydrate sample. And you can see the visible class of hydrate may be up to uh, a half a centimeter or a centimeter across, filling in the voids around the grains. Very, very beautiful. Gas hydrate is so concentrated that it contains 164 times its volume in gas. This demonstration shows the gas escaping as the volume of water is displaced. To be able to physically put your hands in something that no one has ever seen before and to begin to do the scientific studies to characterize those deposits is, for a scientist, it was quite thrilling. There's probably more lunar rocks on the Earth returned from the Apollo program than gas hydrate samples would have been recovered. We've known for over 30 years that gas hydrates exist in nature, but it wasn't until February of this year that scientists were able to extract this number of quality samples. That's a beautiful sample. That's a, a very concentrated sample containing abundant hydrate bubbling away very vigorously even after an hour at the surface. So you see the bubbles all shooting out on the surface? That's the methane That's the methane dissociating and forcing its way out because it's in contact with the warmer water. And the sediments are sands, just simple sandy sediments, chock full of hydrate. So the hydrate, basically it feels like a fizzing uh, pop drink to the touch, I can feel it fizzing and bubbling. And that's the methane gas coming out. That's why we're here. These core samples are hot items sought after by a lot of researchers. That explains why laboratories around the world have received samples for advanced research in areas like hydrology, for example. I'll tell you, there's not too many people who are working with uh, gas hydrate drill core, especially as good as uh, quality drill cores, that, which we're getting now, in the world. So uh, you can't help but be excited about something like this. It's, it's a great opportunity. We're very, very lucky to be involved and, uh, and very much looking forward to uh, taking it the next step to getting our samples packaged and, and then down to our lab and uh, seeing what results we get. Natural gas hydrates are found in two distinct environments. In polar regions, where there are hundreds of meters below the surface, the largest of these are in the Canadian Arctic, Alaska and northern Russia. Reserves also lie below the oceans, beneath the continental shelves. The gas there is frozen by extreme cold and intense pressure. Large deposits lie under the Gulf of Mexico, off Vancouver Island and near the coasts of Japan and India. It's because of this global distribution that so many countries are interested in the Canadian research. Well, there are five countries involved here and so the excitement is not just for us Canadians I think but probably for uh, many people around the world. We are very poor oil gas producing a country and uh, on the other hand we consume much energy and we need some domestic energy, absolutely. And uh, methane hydrate may be 
might be our future domestic energy that's a potential that we have. For us in Germany it's very important because uh, some years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, Germany went out of oil. And you know that Germany is an industry country. We use a lot of energy for cars, for heating and so on. And we are looking for a new source of energy. And gas hydrates are basically a new source of energy, hopefully in the future for us. The First Nations people of the North see their economic future in this potential energy source. 25 years ago, many Northerners opposed the construction of a natural gas pipeline. But today, much of the native leadership has a different view, seeing development of the natural gas industry as a tool for greater economic autonomy. You know, one of the um, big problems we've always seen is a serious reliance on government programs, public housing, uh, always relying on government for income support. Uh, that's not a healthy way for people to to build their self-confidence, their self-esteem, and the ability to move forward. The Northwest Territories have changed a lot. There, the subsoil is practically bursting with conventional natural gas deposits, gaseous gas, and exploration goes on like never before. The economic boom is drawing people from all over Canada, and the First Nations have signed formal agreements with the petroleum industry governing the use of their lands, revenue sharing, and even joint ventures in pipeline construction. Now, gas hydrates are part of the picture. It's a combination of um, resources that will be made available that would make our future viable. But don't expect gas hydrates to be commercially viable tomorrow. First, there are all the logistical problems of resource extraction in a polar region or in the middle of an ocean. Then, there are the technical challenges. How do you melt hydrates to retrieve the natural gas? And last but certainly not least, gas hydrate production will have to be competitive. The challenge really is the technology challenge. It's, they're occurring in the ground, not in the gaseous form. They're occurring as a solid substance. And we have to convert them to a gaseous form in order to get them to the surface and put them in pipeline, the gas in the pipeline, for instance, and get it to a place where we can turn it into energy. Um, so it's all technology. We will be drawing down and reducing the pressure in the formation and looking at the amount of gas yielded. And then we'll also very aggressively try to heat up the formation and warm it up and see how much gas we're able to dissociate. The only way to produce a gas hydrate is either to change its temperature or change the pressure acting upon it. So when you do normal oil and gas production, you usually just draw down, you pump a well, drawing the pressure down. But in hydrates, to really look at large-scale production is generally believed you would have to heat a gas hydrate, have to put energy in. So the minute you do that, that's an energy in cost issue that you're putting money and energy into the formation. So the balance of, of profit becomes more questionable. So when you look at hydrate production, when you consider hydrate production, it's not only the technical aspects, but also the cost of producing them economically. The first production tests took place in the winter of 2002. Several methods were tried to dissolve the hydrates deep below the surface to capture the natural gas. At the behest of the petroleum and gas companies involved in the project, the results are to be kept under wraps until 2004. But the word is that they were very positive. The issues with hydrates today are very difficult environments where they occur, the solid form where you have to add energy to the formation to produce that, and then you're producing gas, what has a certain market value, and if it doesn't compete with all the other resources, it won't be produced. Gas hydrates are perhaps at the stage that tar sands were at maybe 15 years ago, where there was this large resource of petroleum, but it was in a unique form and we had to unravel the science behind it in order to get it out economically. And we're kind of at that stage now in Canada with these gas hydrate deposits. Wow, wow, that's great. 
Researchers are investing a lot of time and energy into unlocking the mystery of natural gas hydrates for two reasons. Not only are there colossal reserves, but also because methane gas is clean energy. Now there's silt in there. Mm, silty. Yeah. I would like to see them produced commercially because I, I'm a great believer in natural gas and if uh, we were able to produce hydrates commercially then countries like Japan and, and other countries which are presently burning coal and, and other uh, less desirable fuels could shift their economies over to natural gas and I think this would be an excellent thing uh, for the planet. Methane gas is clean gas so long as you burn it. Otherwise, if it's released in its natural state, proportionately, it contributes far more to the greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide, CO2. In equal amounts, methane heats the planet at 30 times the rate of CO2. The Great Canadian North is the site of a unique phenomenon that intrigues researchers. Holes are forming on the surface of many frozen lakes. In the middle of a polar region, methane is escaping. Researchers want to know if gas hydrates are the source of this methane. There's an issue at the moment as to whether northern Canada, in fact the Arctic in general, could be a, a source of greenhouse gases. We see evidence uh, throughout the Mackenzie Delta of release of gas through natural processes. For instance, in some lakes you will find holes in the ice where gas is percolating to the surface. This is a natural phenomenon and has occurred for many thousands of years. Theoretically, you could light it right at the surface. The questions I would like to address is whether or not the gas that's presently coming to the surface could be from hydrates that are dissociating at depth, and whether these hydrates might be sensitive to future warming and the rate at which the gas is being transmitted to the surface could increase. In the Earth's geological history, methane has played an important role in warming the planet. What we don't know, though, is if this methane came from natural gas hydrates. There's a possibility that hydrates have dissociated in the past and introduced methane to the atmosphere and increased the concentration of greenhouse gases and therefore perhaps accelerated the pace of warming. So we're interested to look at our hydrates here in northern Canada and other elsewhere in marine environments, establish how sensitive they are to temperature change. While the role of natural gas hydrates in climate change may be in doubt, scientists are clear on their potential as an energy source. I believe that this energy resource will just become so valuable that we will have to, in the future, look to find ways to produce gas hydrates. Um, I'm not sure whether it'll be an energy bonanza. I hope it will be. Uh, as an energy-starved uh, researcher, I'm always looking for positive things, yeah. but um, my feeling is that certainly it'll come on stream in the future, maybe in the next 15 years or so, as a direct complement to conventional sources of natural gas. Hydrates, even in these settings where they're highly concentrated, where other activities are ongoing, you're still looking at least 10, 15 years off. But if you start looking at marine gas hydrates, deep environments where most of the hydrates actually occur volumetrically, you're still probably talking 30 years, even maybe 50 years off. So it's not something that we're looking at for today. It's something you're looking at for the future. A lot more has yet to be uncovered before we can produce gas hydrates profitably and safely. Though if there is a place where production is likely to begin, then it's the great Canadian North. Until then, natural gas hydrates will remain what they've been for millennia, an immense untapped reserve of energy. One day though, this land of ice may really become a land of fire.